Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we're doing another two-part series going over knee hyperextension. So if you are someone where your knee pops back, some people call it recurvatum, knee hyperextension, the most obvious description in my mind is just that your knee pops back. That's how I hear a lot of you all describe it, is how do I stop my knee from popping back? Um, then this video series is definitely for you. In the first part, we're gonna go over exercises to help develop the motor control that you need to stop it from doing that. And then part two is gonna be carrying that over into function and how to actually progress standing, learning how to not let that knee pop back. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. Before we get started with actually the exercise, it's good to go over kind of what could be causing your knee to pop back. There are several things that can cause that recurvatum. Sometimes it is spasticity in your ankle. So if your foot points and your foot is on the ground, that causes the knee to pop back and go into that recurvatum. Another thing that'll cause that knee to pop back when you go to stand on it is weakness in the hamstrings. So believe it or not, the muscles on the back of the knee that bend the knee, when they're weak in standing, that creates some laxity back there and that can cause the knee to go into hyperextension. The other thing that I see that's very common is there's just a lack of coordination between the hamstrings, the knee, the muscles that bend the knee, and the quads, and those are the muscles on the front of the thigh. So there's just like a discoordination between those muscles on the back. I would call probably all the posterior chain. It would also include your glute muscles and the muscles on the front. So the quadricep muscles. When you don't have that balance, that will also cause the knee to pop back. Usually it's an underactive posterior chain, meaning the hamstrings and the glutes, and an overactive quadricep. So your knee, the quadricep extends the knee, and there's nothing to counterbalance that. So you don't have anything on the backside to help counterbalance that. And when you're standing on the leg, both sides I call kind of co-contract. So they create a scaffolding around the knee and actually create a stability. And basically you're just getting stability on the front from the quads and you've kind of lost that stability on the back side of the knee. And so path of least resistance, that's just where the knee tends to go. The reason I go over all that is if you fall into the first group and it's hard for me to know. So as I've said in other videos, the best case scenario is always that you're working with a physical therapist and that these videos are just supplementing that so you already are aware of where your deficits are or where your problems are and you're finding the videos that address your specific problems and you're doing those exercises. But if you know that your knee is popping back because your foot is pointing and you have spasticity in your ankle, I would say a better progression would be for you to do the videos on spasticity in the ankle and I will put a link for that right here. I'm just gonna link the first video and then you will see in that video, you'll have links to all the other videos that fall into that. And I would say this video is more for those of you that have lack of control on the posterior chain or the hamstrings and the glutes and you maybe have like an overactive quadricep. So now, all of that being said, I'm hoping that this exercise progression will make a whole lot more sense. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. All the exercises that we do are going to address the hamstrings and the posterior chain. Because like I had mentioned, those is, that is the underactive component that in some cases is causing that knee to pop back. So to activate the hamstrings or a very early exercise to get the muscles that flex the knee involved or activated is to start in what we call a hook line position. So this is a hook line position with the foot on a mat the reason this is great is because the hip is also flexed up. So that is, and I've talked about this before, that helps to facilitate more knee bending. So when the hip is bent up, 
the knee is more likely to bend. So that's why this is a great position. And then you're basically gonna do a heel slide. If you've ever been to physical therapy for anything, <laughs> you have probably done a heel slide. Um, I've never seen in all the jobs I've had and all the places I've worked and all the home exercise programs I've had, I've never seen it not be on a generic home exercise program. The thing you wanna pay attention to is there's two ways to slide that heel up towards your bottom. You could totally just use your hip flexors and lift the leg and then gravity is just gonna make the knee bend and it's gonna appear that you are doing a heel slide, but what you wanna emphasize is that your heel is actually digging into the mat the entire way that you're bringing it up. That is what is going to activate that hamstring muscle. A clear sign that that is not happening is if your foot is coming up off the mat when you do this. If that is happening, just go into, just bend the knee up and keep the knee in the hip flex, we call this kind of like a hook line position, and just try and push the heel into the mat. Really get getting used to pushing down with the knee flex. That is what's gonna activate that posterior chain. It's the combination of pushing the leg down towards the mat and sliding that heel up towards your bottom. So I'm gonna give a few variations here of how you can modify this exercise to really ensure that you are isolating that hamstring muscle, that posterior chain, that entire posterior chain and you're not using your hip flexors. So I have an incline here. Um, I just used a slide board and a stool. You can get creative, just something where your foot is starting higher up. Now you're gonna be able to use gravity, but it's also going to teach you the correct movement. So even though gravity is helping you in this position, it's teaching you how to bring the leg down, so pushing down while you're bending the knee. Now, the key thing to look for, and I see this a lot, is in abnormal movement pattern, a lot of times the knee will flop out to the side. If it happens here, it's gonna happen when you're walking and it's really gonna throw you off balance. And that addresses, that brings up a whole nother set of movement problems when you get to walking that people ask me about is why does my knee go out to the side? So you really wanna make sure your knee's not going out to the side. So I've given a few modifications that you can do to make sure that that knee stays straight up or even slightly pointed toward the other side of your body when you bring the leg up. The first way is just to put a wedge under your hip. So I will put a link in the description below. These wedges are great. You can use them. I use them in a lot of my videos for positioning. Positioning is critical to regain normal movement patterns. So I will put a link for that in the description below, but you're just gonna put a wedge under there. What that basically does is it basically just tips your pelvis towards the opposite side and basically just allows gravity to help a little bit to keep that knee in and then you're gonna do the same thing. If it's still flopping out to the side, this is gonna be, this is gonna offer more help. So I always recommend start with the one that's giving you the least assistance. If that's not working, then add, then go to something that gives you more help. But this next one, you're basically gonna use your involved leg to help you and my, here's one of my little handy dandy blue straps that I use in a lot of my videos, and I'll put a link for that in the description below. These are Nylatex straps. I highly recommend them. They have a rubber on the bottom side of them so they don't move, they really stay put, and they're Velcro so they're easy to strap and unstrap. But you're gonna just strap your knees together, and now you're basically kind of using your involved leg to help keep that hip in what we call neutral rotation. So it's not flopping out to the side, but it's actually staying right in a straight line. So that would be a modification. The next progression to addressing that posterior chain, remember I said when the hip is bent up, it's easier. Now we're gonna actually go to a harder position, so we're gonna fully extend the hip, and now try and bend that knee with the hip extended. This is definitely breaking up a spastic pattern. A lot of times when your hip is extended, your knee wants to straighten out. So this is a very advanced position. Now with your leg hanging off the mat like this, I've heard this a lot and it's really true. It's really hard to do this on a bed or a, a couch. 
I'm going to put a link in the description below for a mat, a portable mat table. If you are someone who is really investing a lot of time and energy and really motivated to get normalized movement patterns, a mat table is a great investment. There's a lot of exercises that you can do on it. You can keep it set up and when you have guests and company come over, you can have someone help you fold it up. It's really hard to do if you only have one arm to fold it up on your own, but it does fold up and it can be put in a closet or underneath a bed when it's not being used. That being said, you're gonna hang your leg off the off the side of the mat. Again, a, a bed is really hard because it's squishy on the side here, but you're gonna use the same progression. So you're gonna use that same incline board to give you a little bit of assistance and you're gonna try and bend your knee, sliding it down the board. Again, really pay attention that you're not lifting your knee up and that's why your knee is bending because then you are using a movement pattern to create that knee bend. So you wanna definitely make sure that your foot is staying in contact with the board. And then when you could do that, the most challenging way to bend the knee is to have the hip fully extended without having that incline. So you've got no gravity assistance here and you're going to bend the knee, bringing the knee up towards your heel, or I'm sorry, bring the heel up towards your bottom. And again, making sure that you're not flexing that hip. This is a really difficult one to do. If you can't do it, definitely go back to the ones where it's just up on the mat, quality movement. Remember, we're retraining that brain. And that is it. That is a mat exercise. That is a mat progression for how to isolate your posterior chain and stop your knee from hyperextending. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, stay tuned. The part two of this video is going to be how to carry this over into standing and how to slowly work on putting weight on that leg using a very simple progression that I've used in other videos without letting that knee pop back and regaining that balance between your quads and your posterior chain. So regaining that balance, that co-contraction or that control between the posterior chain, which is all the muscles we just worked, and the quadriceps and having them work equally versus having the quads dominating and having that knee going into that hyperextension. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, leave me a comment. This video, as I said before, was another video that was created because someone left a comment saying that this was a problem for them. So definitely comment below. Keep working hard. I love that you guys are watching these videos. Uh, it just shows me how many people out there are just truly motivated and taking ownership of their own recovery. So I love it, it inspires me, it motivates me to keep putting out videos. So keep up the good work and until next time, you all have a great evening.